If you've been around here for a while, then you know that I just bought a new house and that I'm on a journey to make it the best dang smart home that ever was. So far, I've managed to get my internet access, home network, and a server up and running in my comms rack, which is a great foundation to build on top of. I've chosen Home Assistant to be my smart home brain and decided that I'm going to be using mainly Zigbee smart devices. It's now time to get the first of these smart devices installed, starting with light switches. My house is relatively new, and it has dozens and dozens of these recessed ceiling lights in all of the rooms. These are GU10 light bulbs, and if you want to buy smart versions of these, you're looking at at least 10 bucks per bulb, which gets really expensive when you're replacing a whole room of them, let alone a whole house of them. And it's not just the price either. Have you ever tried to pair 10 Zigbee light bulbs that are all connected to a single switch? You need to pair them one by one, give them each a unique name like kitchen ceiling, front left one, and then manage them all as a Zigbee Your Home Assistant group, which is a total ball ache. Then it all comes crashing down when a guest comes over and tries to control your smart lights from your old school dumb switch. Everything loses power, your Zigbee mesh network has a big chunk of it taken out, and it's just a big fat mess. Smart light bulbs do have a place in a smart home, and we'll talk about some examples in the next video. But when you're talking about making your big lights smart, then the best solution is to leave all of your existing light bulbs how they are and replace these dumb switches with a new smart version. Light switches aren't something that you want to replace regularly, so I really only had one shot at getting the right switch for my home. I put together a list of requirements, bought a bunch of different smart light switches, and put them head to head in this test rig here to see which one would take the top spot in my house. Let's take a look. It's worth pointing out that I live in the UK, and I'm looking specifically for light switches to work in my smart home. The switches that I'm testing here are all designed for the European market. If you're somewhere else in the world, you'll have different options available, but the theory should be fairly similar. I also bought all of these switches with my own money, so there's no sponsorship or influencing going on. As my house is quite new, I have neutral wires available at my switches, so I'm fortunate to be able to access a bigger variety of smart switches but I will be testing a couple of switches that don't require a neutral wire because they either looked great or they got great reviews. If you have no idea what a neutral wire is, why it's important, or whether or not you have them in the right places in your house, then take a look at the video I made previously that explains the basics of smart light switches in more detail. I've linked to it in the description below. Like all the other big smart home decisions I've made, I first wrote down a list of requirements which the ideal light switch would hopefully meet. Firstly, I wanted it to be locally controlled without needing internet access or a random third-party cloud account for the lights to work. Last year, a smart home company called Insteon went bankrupt overnight and switched off all of their cloud servers. That meant that anyone using Insteon products could no longer turn on and off their smart lights. That is absolutely ridiculous, and there is no way that I want that to ever happen in my home. This is one of the reasons why I'm looking for a Zigbee-based smart light solution. Zigbee is a totally local wireless mesh networking protocol, and if you're not familiar with it, then you should take a look at a previous video that I made all about smart home protocols and why I chose Zigbee to be the one for my house. I also want whatever switch that I choose to keep working as a normal push button light switch that turns on and off the lights if my Zigbee network or my smart home platform stops working for any reason. It should physically cut the power to the lights whenever you press the button. Some hardwired devices like light bulbs and light switches help strengthen the overall Zigbee network in my home by acting as routers. Unfortunately, not all hardwired devices are routers, and I've noticed this mainly to be switches that don't have neutral wires. I want my smart light switches to create a solid Zigbee mesh network backbone that stretches throughout my house, so I'll be testing each switch to see if it acts as a router or not. The switches also need to look attractive and feel high quality to the touch. If I'm going to be ripping a bunch of switches out of the wall, making big holes in the plasterboard, then I need to be damn sure that my partner won't call them ugly or hate using them. She's still a little bit peeved about the mess that was left over from the network cable installation. And there's no point in the switches looking good and being high quality if they're difficult to use. It's really important that normal people who come over to our house are able to intuitively turn on and off the lights and turn up and down their brightness. I'd ideally like to be able to dim the big lights in certain rooms to create a bit of ambiance when we're eating dinner or watching a film, 
I also don't want the motion activated lights to come on at full brightness in the middle of the night when I get up to go to the toilet. And finally, it absolutely must work with Home Assistant and it needs to work well. I wrote down my criteria into a spreadsheet so that I could give each light switch that I test different ratings and eventually a score out of 10 against all the requirements. I also recorded the price that I paid for each switch in US dollars, whether or not it needs a neutral wire, and some other information and notes that I thought were useful. I've put this into an article on my Home Automation Guy website if you're interested in taking a deeper look, and you'll find that linked in the description below. The testing was all done in this test rig that my dad and I made last summer. It simulates two lighting circuits, and I can easily wire in both switches that do and do not need neutral wires. The whole thing can be physically unplugged from the power so that I'm 100% certain that I won't electrocute myself when I install a new switch. The plug is fused so that if something shorts out, it won't catch fire. And I'm plugging it into this power monitor so I can measure how much power each switch needs to run. And finally, I'll be connecting these devices into my Home Assistant Yellow, which I'm using as my test environment. This uses the same Zigbee radio as the Home Assistant Sky Connect that I run in my main Home Assistant server, so it should act as a good test. I'll be pairing any Zigbee devices with ZHA, but I'll also test any of the shortlisted devices in Zigbee to MQTT as that's the system that I'm running day to day. Right, let's get started. The first switch that I tested was the Mose WSEUB push button switch. I've got a two gang and a three gang version of this to test out, but I'm guessing that they're the exact same in terms of functionality. Here's a pro tip. It's not a bad idea to wire a three gang switch into your wall, even though you only actually need two switches. You can keep the third switch unwired, but use it as a remote button in Home Assistant to trigger a scene or some sort of automation. You're welcome. These Mo switches are Zigbee based, don't need a neutral wire, and cost about 23 US dollars. You can get them in one, two, or three gang in either black or white. I decided to wire it in without the neutral wire, even though it has a place where you can connect one in if you so wish. The terminals are well laid out, it was easy to install, and the faceplate snapped on pretty easily. To put this device into pairing mode, you hold down the left switch for about 10 seconds until the LEDs blink, and it was detected immediately in ZHA. The lights turned on and off pretty quickly, which you'd expect from a Zigbee switch, and it made no clicking noise at all when you remotely activated the lights. Sadly though, it was detected as a Zigbee end device, not a router. That means it would not help me at all to build my Zigbee mesh network, which was pretty disappointing. I then thought that it might work as a router if I hardwired in a neutral, since there was a hole for it. So I rewired it up, repaired it to Home Assistant, and sadly it still wasn't acting as a router. Visually, the switch looks pretty good, but oh boy, does it feel crappy and cheap. When you press it, the whole thing kind of wobbles and it makes a horrible mechanical clicking noise whenever you press the button. I could probably handle it if it was just the clicking noise, because it does give a nice tactile indication that you've pressed the button properly, like an old school light switch, but it just felt really plasticky and gross. This isn't a dimmable switch, but it came up in Home Assistant as a normal old light and worked pretty consistently. Overall, I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10, mainly because it feels cheap, doesn't act as a router, and isn't dimmable. I didn't end up bothering to test the 3 gang version of this because it was exactly the same and wouldn't score any higher. Next up we had another Moe's Zigbee switch, this time the WSEUD for Delta. It was significantly more expensive than the previous switch, coming in at about $40 a pop. You can get them in 1, 2, or 3 gang, and in either black or white. This is a touch based switch rather than a button, so it has a glass faceplate with these little circles in it that you touch to turn on and off the light. The first time I tested this switch it barely worked when I touched it, and it was super frustrating. I returned it and got a replacement, so maybe I just got unlucky and got sent a dodgy one. It was pretty easy to wire in, and it definitely needs a neutral wire to work. This time the buttons worked really accurately, and the lights faded in and out when you turned them on and off, which was a nice touch. This switch actually supports dimming, and if you hold the button down, it fades up and down the lights. I found this to be really unintuitive though. If the light brightness is at 50%, how do you turn it up or down? You hold the button down and then it randomly decides to either start brightening or dimming itself. You then need to retouch the light switch if you want to go the other way. It's a bit weird. You put it into pairing mode by pressing the button six times, holding it on the last press until the LEDs start flashing. It paired instantly with ZHA and the lights were detected as dimmable, so you can use the familiar slider to control them. It was also detected as a Zigbee router, which is great news. 
Unfortunately, I found it to be a bit flaky when using it via Home Assistant though, which was a really disappointing thing because everything else about the Switch seemed really great. A lot of the time, the Switch just wouldn't react at all to my Home Assistant requests, especially when I tried to change the dimming settings. It just wouldn't make the changes to the actual lights, despite Home Assistant saying that they had actually been applied. I had to give this Switch a 7 out of 10. The Switch does work with Home Assistant, but the fact that it didn't work consistently well was a red flag for me. That would not go down well with my partner, so we needed to look for something else. I was a bit disappointed in Moe's, because I'd read some pretty good reviews on Reddit and Smart Home blogs about their Switches. I decided to move on to a brand that I had a lot of respect for, and whose devices that I've been using for some time in my smart home. A couple of years ago, Akara released some smart switches for the EU market called the H1. It's available in 1 and 2 gang form factors, and they also make both a neutral and non-neutral version. It also had a couple of bonus features that I'd never really considered before. One of those is the ability to decouple the relay in the back of the switch from the button itself. This lets you keep the switch permanently on in the background, which is useful for keeping power to the light bulbs if you want to use smart bulbs. And then you can use the wall switch itself to trigger different things in Home Assistant. You can also use this feature to simulate two-way switching. So you can have one switch at the bottom of your stairs in relay mode, which physically turns on and off the power to the lights. And then you can use a wired switch in decoupled mode at the top of the stairs. You can program the top switch to wirelessly turn on and off the bottom switch, so that it acts like a traditional two-way switch. If you don't want to wire in a second remote switch, they also sell a battery version, which doesn't actually connect to the power, but it looks and feels the same, and can be stuck to a wall anywhere to simulate that second two-way switch. These decoupled switches can be used in Home Assistant to trigger almost any scene or automation, and they support single and double tap actions. It's super cool. These Akara switches also support energy monitoring, so you can find out exactly how much power the lights are using when they're on, and how that contributes to your energy bills. This works natively with the Home Assistant energy monitoring capabilities, and that was a really nice bonus feature that I was not expecting. So far these switches are looking pretty good, but how do they actually perform as a smart light switch? I started off by wiring in this non-neutral single gang switch. It was pretty easy to wire in, and fit nicely into the back box. Unfortunately, it took quite a bit of finessing and swearing to get the faceplate on properly, but once it eventually clicked in, it felt really solid. The switch feels really high quality, made of some metal and solid feeling plastic. The switch reacts instantly when you press it, but it does make a clicking sound as the relay flicks in and out. I found this a bit overbearing at first, but it does give you that nice tactile reaction to let you know that the switch was indeed pressed properly, something that you don't get from those glass touch-based switches. To pair the switch, you hold down the button for a few seconds, and it was instantly detected in ZHA. The switch worked really well in Home Assistant, and reacted instantly and consistently when I used it. Unfortunately though, it did not work as a Zigbee router, and I couldn't see any of the options to put it into decoupled mode. I then paired it with Zigbee to MQTT, and I got a few extra controls and configuration options, including the decoupled mode, and the ability to turn off the indicator LEDs. I then wired in the two-gang version that required a neutral to see if there was any difference. It was basically the same switch, with the same build quality, and the same difficult to attach faceplate. When I now paired it with ZHA, I could see immediately that it had been picked up as a Zigbee router, which is good news. Pairing it with Zigbee to MQTT brought back all those extra controls and configuration options, including the bonus power consumption sensors. If I turn the lights on, I can see the power usage immediately go up as all the LED bulbs turn on. It turns out that the power monitoring functionality is only available on the neutral version. This is a really nice switch, my favourite of the ones that I've tested here so far. The only thing that it didn't have on my requirements list is dimming capabilities, but the bonus features like decoupling the switch and power monitoring have kind of made up for it. It's also a bit annoying that it only comes in one or two gang models. I have some rooms where I need three or four gang switches. For those reasons, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. The Akara was almost the perfect switch, but in my living room, dining room, and bedrooms, dimming was a must-have. That's when I came across the Candeo Zigbee Rotary Dimmer Switch. From the outside, it looks just like a standard dimmer that we've been seeing in houses since the 70s. The back of it is absolutely tiny, and it's designed to be a drop-in replacement for any UK dimmer switch you might already have in your house. You could easily put these side-by-side -side into an existing 4-gang dimmer faceplate. It even supports dimming LED lights. But on that note, if you're dimming LED lights, you need to make sure that the bulbs themselves support dimming. 
Not all LEDs are dimmable, so make sure that you've chosen the right ones and you check before you install a dimmer. This has absolutely nothing to do with smart light switches, really. It applies to all dimmers. The Candeo dimmer doesn't even need a neutral wire, and it costs about 45 bucks, which is slightly cheaper than Niakara. It was super easy to wire in, and actually supports traditional two-way switching as well, so you can put it in somewhere where you already have a two-way switch set up. None of the others that I tested supported this functionality. It's super intuitive to use. Press the knob in to turn it on and off, and twist the knob to dim and brighten the lights. Everyone knows how to do that. And unlike some dimmer switches, there is absolutely no noise or buzzing sound that comes out of it even when the lights are super dim. The button feels really nice, and the knob twists like it's gliding through butter. It's a really, really nice feeling switch, and it blends in on the wall because it looks so familiar. You can put it into pairing mode by pressing the button twice and holding it down on the second press. After a few seconds, the lights will flash and it will immediately pair with ZAJ. The light is detected as a dimmable light by Home Assistant, and you can turn it on and off and adjust the brightness using the familiar controls. Now check this out, it even acts as a Zigbee router, without a neutral wire. That's freaking amazing. It's super responsive in Home Assistant, both to toggle the lights and to adjust the brightness. I honestly can't fault this switch. One thing to note though, is that it draws about 0.4 watts of power when sitting at idle. None of the other switches that I tested actually registered anything on my electricity meter, so that was interesting. But I'm happy to give this great switch that small amount of power. It meets every single one of my requirements, so I'm giving it 10 out of 10. It's a work of beauty, and I tip my hat to you, Candeo. So I've now got two Zigbee switches that I'm pretty happy with. The Akara H1 for places where I have lights that aren't dimmable, like my laundry or my stairs or in my back garden, and the Candeo dimmer for the main rooms where I want things dimmed. This will cover about 80 or 90% of my smart light needs, and because they're both Zigbee routers, they will create an awesome Zigbee mesh network backbone. Unfortunately, I still have a problem with some rooms where I need three or four gang switches, and I haven't found anything suitable for those. Maybe it's time to take a look at some Wi-Fi based switches. I bought two rebadged Tuya switches, one from Lon Sonho, which is a four gang push button switch, and another one from a company called Yidi, which was another glass touch switch. They were both pretty easy to physically install, but setting them up was a pain because I had to sign up for a Tuya account, then I had to install an app on my phone, then I had to join them to my Wi-Fi network. To get them into Home Assistant, I had to first sign up for a Tuya developer account, then I had to create an app ID and a secret and install a new integration, and then I was able to finally use them in Home Assistant. Of course, this is now reliant on my internet connection, the Tuya servers being online, and I give up a huge amount of my privacy. Not only that, the build quality of both of these switches was absolutely terrible. The Lon Sonho felt like it was made of the thinnest plastic ever, and you had to press the switch in exactly the perfect spot for it to work. If you pressed it slightly on either side, the whole switch wobbled, but it wouldn't turn on. As for the Yeti switch, well, just take a look. What a piece of shit. I also wanted to take a quick look at Shelly's relays to see if any of their products would be suitable. They make amazing relays that work on Wi-Fi, but they're totally locally controlled and don't need any sort of apps or cloud accounts to work. They also are perfectly supported by Home Assistant. They make these cool switch relay holders that fit into a UK back box, and you can plug in different relays into the back of them, depending on your specific use case. Unfortunately, they don't have any three or four gang products available either, and the switches themselves feel really cheap and crappy. If you're not familiar with what a relay is or how it works, I've made a video about that in the past, which you should definitely go and check out. I've linked to it in the description below. So I'm not gonna be using Shelly for my light switches, but I will still keep using their relays for other use cases around my smart home. I also just can't bring myself to go with a Wi-Fi switch that needs a cloud account in order to work just so that I can have a four gang light switch, especially when the end product itself is utter garbage. I'm gonna forge ahead with a combination of the Candeo dimmer switch for the rooms I want dimming in and the Akara H1 with neutral wire for the hallways, bathrooms and other places that I have non-dimmable lights. While I'm pretty comfortable with wiring a switch like this into my controlled test rig, there was no way at all I would be installing these switches into my house by myself. This is the actual wiring that was behind one of my four gang switches in my hallway. Yikes. 
I called in the electricians who installed my home network, and they wired everything up in a couple of days. They even ripped out my old back boxes and replaced them with two single back boxes. This let me replace the original four gang light switches with two double switches side by side. This lets me use one side of the switches in relay mode to control the power going up to the lights themselves, and then the other side in decoupled mode to wirelessly turn on the switch in the level below so that they stairwell lights work the same way as they did before in their two-way switching mode. I can also double tap these switches to trigger any sort of scene or automation that I've got set up in Home Assistant, but we'll look at that in a bit more detail in a future video. Installing the new back boxes did make a bit of a mess of the plasterboard and the filler, but I knew that was going to be the case, which is why I got this all done right at the beginning before we got decorators and painters in, so that should polish up just fine. Now there was one weird thing with the Candeo dimmer that I have to mention. The dimmer needs to have at least 5 watts of load hanging off it in order to work properly. In some rooms I have a really small number of light bulbs, and I noticed that one of the LEDs would glow even though that the light switch was turned off. This is apparently pretty normal for non-neutral smart switches, and I had to get the electrician to wire in an LED bypass capacitor. This gets wired onto the first light bulb in the circuit and helps improve the performance of the dimmer and stops that weird ghostly glow. I've been using these light switches in my house for about 6 weeks now and they've been flawless. Just check out this beautiful Zigbee mesh network that they're creating. I've had no dropouts from any of my Zigbee devices since these switches have gone in. Mission accomplished. This was an absolutely mammoth video to make. It took me three days to produce, but I'm pretty happy that I was able to test my way into finding some awesome smart light switches for my new house. It also cost me quite a bit of money to buy all of these test devices that I'm never gonna use. I don't do this YouTube thing for money, I just do it because I enjoy it. If you got any kind of value out of this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me understand if this kind of thing is useful or not. Either way, I'm stoked with the outcome of this project, and the main lights in my house are working great. In the next video, we're going to continue with the theme of smart lighting, but focus on accent lighting using smart bulbs, LED strips, and a few other tricks to create a bit more ambience. We'll then tie it all together with some motion and other presence sensors to create automations so that, ironically, we don't ever need to touch our light switches with our hands ever again. Except for maybe this one, which is called the NS Panel, and it's made by Sonoff. They sent me this thing about 18 months ago, but I couldn't use it because I was renting. It's essentially a two gang light switch with a touch screen on it, and I've been told that you can flash it with a custom set of firmware to make it compatible with Home Assistant. You can then configure the touch screen to turn on and off different scenes, activate automations, control music, and much more. What do you think? Should we set it up in a future video? Let me know in the comments below. I think it's gonna be really fun, and we're both gonna learn a ton from it. If you want to follow along on this smart home journey with me, then hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos when they're released, and then together we can make your home smarter.